Hi, I'm Tom Richardson for Boating Local, and today I'm at Matan Marine Restoration in Halifax, Massachusetts. Now, Matan is known for doing some amazing restoration work on classic boats. They've handled everything from 34-foot formulas to 13-foot classic Boston whalers. They've done a, a whole bunch of those, and maybe you've seen them at the, at the boat shows in New England. Anyways, today I've brought them something a little less challenging. It's a, a 1984 AMF Sunfish that my son bought over the winter. It has a slight, uh, slightly damaged hull section, and we're gonna see how Mike Borelli and the folks at Matan go about fixing such a problem. Well, I'm here with, uh, with Mike Borelli. He's the uh, founder and president of Matan uh, Marine Restoration, so I know I'm in good hands. Uh, what, do you, what do you think uh, so far, Mike? You think it's uh, something uh, within your capabilities? Tommy brought us a real easy one, um, and it's just demonstrate um, pretty straightforward, a little fiberglass repair. Um, right now all Scotty's doing is just wiping down the surrounding area so we can get a good look at it. Um, also what that does for us too, if it was a bigger repair, a lot of people don't realize is if you have a fiberglass crunch, say about this big, yeah. what, after you wipe it, you can find out that that crunch is this big because the cracks carry out and you have to grind out all the cracks to properly fix it. So sometimes something like this might start out as only this, but it might turn into this. Right. In this particular case, you know, it looks like you bumped something off the trailer or maybe hit a little rock. Uh, the reason why this area gave in is because it's actually a little factory void. Oh, really? Yeah, no kidding. What year is this thing? It's uh, 84. Well, you know, that thing's been there for 30 years. Yeah. 30 plus years. You just happen to hit it in the right spot and it busted open the void. You can clearly see. It was originally a void. You can actually see a nice clear perimeter of where it hit and it just collapsed in that void area. The also, uh, a good clear sign is, if you look, can you see the, the top laminate? It's actually all dry, okay? So that means it was just a reg resin starved area. And watch this, and you can see it as we peel it away. You see the gloss, okay? It's actually a little bit of, see how the fiberglass strands have no resin in them whatsoever? So this is a common problem. That just because it's a sunfish or any other boat, this is something that we run into all the time, especially with all the warranty work that we do in different, uh, for different manufacturers. Um, listen, nobody's perfect. So this is gonna be a pretty straightforward repair. Scotty's gonna grind this out. And you can see, you can actually see, look how dry all the fiberglass is. All right, Scotty, do your thing. Let's just give this a little grind out. What we'll do is we'll add a little bit of uh, glass, a little resin, fill it up, do a little fairing, come in with your magic, do a little gel coat, and we'll be all set. First step after opening up the void is to smooth the edges around the damaged area using a grinder. You see how that little void at least turned into this? And you can see now we're down to solid laminate. We got rid of that void. Scotty will come in, lay in a couple pieces of glass. We'll grind the glass down, shape it, put a little vinyl ester filler on it, fair it. And then uh, you can prep it for some gel coat. Next, Scotty places tape around the repair area to prevent excess resin from getting onto other parts of the hull. To help him cut the precise thickness of fiberglass, he places a piece of plastic over the damaged area and traces the shape of each fiberglass layer. I start with one full piece that covers the whole repair. Because I'm going to stand the back and you don't want to take all your layers off. So you just put back the same amount of layers that's in this. So there's and like I, three layers there you're, you're marking? Yes, well yeah. And what you do is you go from the outside and you move, bring it in like a quarter of an inch and bring it in a quarter of an inch and then you put the last one on top. Ah. You go from the to the top. So Next, Scotty like cuts out down. the plastic template and uses it to cut each fiberglass layer. And then you grab a piece of glass. So now what I do is I just trace it out. And you can still want to see your piece.
Now that I have the pieces cut out, I just put them back in order the way it was. And I just take my pieces and I bring it over to repair. What I do is I just put it on top just to make sure it feels good. It looks good. Usually you can tell by feel if it needs one more layer or not. I think that's pretty good. One more piece, just to be on the safe side. I like the way I sat. Once the three layers of fiberglass are cut, Scotty mixes up some vinyl ester resin and hardener and carefully wets out each section. You'll see how, how it absorbs right through, how it just changed the color. And I just flip it back over just to make sure that it's all nice and absorbed. Now you take your first piece. Put it right over the whole repair. And just dab it in. Give it all your air pockets. You could put them all together and just throw them on, but now you're taking the chance of uh, putting an airbound pocket in one of the layers. Now, if you don't get all the air out, now you're starting the process all over again. You're, so you're, I just do one. A, you're creating another void, basically. Right. So I do one layer at a time, tap it out, make sure you got no air pockets. It only takes a few seconds longer, but you're guaranteed not to have a mess. One last little piece. Right over the center. After the resin soaked fiberglass has been applied, Scotty covers the repair with a piece of peel, peel ply. The peel ply, you called it? Yeah, this is peel ply. It's like a silky fabric. And what you do is you put it over the top of uh, your repair, and it gives it a nice smooth surface. Plus, it also holds the heat in. Why is it important to hold the heat in? So it cures yeah, it helps, it helps more effectively? It helps it cure a little faster. And with this on here, you can actually see your shape. If it's low or if you put enough pieces on. All right, now I'm cleaning my surface. He waits for the resin to set up. Scotty oh, cleans the hull to get a better idea of its true color so he can match it with the gel coat. After about 30 minutes, the fiberglass is hard enough to sand smooth. A little bit. I try not to leave any glass on the gel coat. I want the, the glass on the repair itself. Ah. You know what I mean? It After a little hand sanding, Scotty cleans the area with some acetone. Set it off. To fill in any low spots and pinholes in the repair area, Scotty applies a thin resin based skim coat. Well, this just fills in any little low spots, if there is any. And then uh, if there's any pinholes, it fills it. Finally, it was time to mix up the gel coat. To match the existing hull color, Scotty must play part chemist, part artist. When we put it at the color up against your boat, it's just a shade off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try darkening it up a little bit. A little bit of yellow in it, off the mix, and uh, I'm gonna stare it in so that way we Once the gel coat is hardened, Scotty wipes the area with some acetone to remove any waxy residue. If you feel it now, you don't see no fingerprints or nothing, it's solid. The final step is some light wet sanding to make a seamless transition between the repair and the rest of the hull.
Mike, amazing job. I, I can't believe it. It looks like a brand new boat. In fact, I don't even know if I want to use it. <laughs> but go, ahead, it's, go ahead and use it. You're just going to screw it up again. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll be back, right? But, uh, but it's amazing how many steps are involved in what is seemingly a small, minor repair job. I mean, there's a ton of steps involved. It uh, really shows you what you guys go through on a daily basis. Well, you know what? It, it does. It's going to give the consumer the idea, too, of what it takes just to fix a little thing like this. You know, when somebody calls and says, I only have a little ding, and you you know, you tell them it's four or five hundred bucks, they're like, what? <laughs> you know, right. and they don't realize yeah. it just took one of my guys four hours to do that it did. repair. It was four hours, you're and, right. And, uh, you know, if you want a professional repair done, and as they can see from the video, there's no downtime. I mean, that's Scotty for four hours, hustling in 85 degree temperature, yeah. so everything's kicking off quicker. And in the winter time, we use infrared lights and all that to accelerate it to make our sun. Mm -hmm. So we, it's in our best interest to get the job done the quickest it can anyway. That's right. But we have to still keep the quality up. Yeah, well, it looks great. The quality is there, uh, evident uh, in Scotty's uh, craftsmanship today. Thanks a lot, Scotty. Thank I really appreciate it, Thank you, Mike. Um, and uh, we'll be back to uh, bring you more of uh, Matan Marine Restoration's uh, restoration magic. I'm Tom Richardson for Boating Local. Thanks for watching.